Microsoft Excel is one of Microsoft's most versatile Office applications. Because Excel has so many capabilities, keyboard shortcuts have been created to enable faster access to popular features. Let's explore the first of a three-part video series covering Excel keyboard shortcuts most loved by my students. We'll begin by just selecting a range of data. When you have a table that has dozens, maybe hundreds of columns, or hundreds, maybe thousands of rows, and you want to highlight all the data, you're not going to take your mouse, click and hold in the upper left-hand corner, and drag all the way down to the lower right. Instead, if you click anywhere in the data and press Control A, that will select all the data to the data range extents. In other words, it searches north, south, east, and west for the first blank row or column it encounters, and that becomes the range selection. When navigating through data, it's often necessary to move to the very last row, column, or very first row or column. In a small table, this isn't terribly difficult because you can just use your arrow keys to move up and down to the first or last row or side to side to the first or last column. But in a larger table, say hundreds of thousands of rows, this will prove difficult. To quickly jump to the top, bottom, leftmost, or rightmost column in a table, hold down your control key and use the up, down, left arrow keys. So in this example, if I hold down control down arrow, I move to the total row. A control up arrow would move me to the header row. Control right arrow would move me to the total column, and control left arrow would move me to the leftmost column of the table. If you have several tables, one right after the other, you can repeatedly press control arrow to navigate to the bottom of one table, then the top of the next table, then the bottom of that table to the top of the next table, and then the bottom of that table, so on and so forth. When selecting data, if the data is in adjacent rows or columns, it's very easy to use your mouse to click and drag down, or click and drag to the side, or even diagonally. But if you're a fan of the keyboard, you can hold down your shift key and repeatedly hit the down arrow key, the right arrow key. Of course, this works with the up arrow key and left arrow key as well. Now let's combine the quick navigation of control with the selection of shift. If I need to select a series of rows or series of columns from the beginning to the end of a range, holding down control, of course, will take me to the bottom or top of a range, Holding down shift will select, but if you do both, control and shift, you can move to the end of a range and select simultaneously. If I were to press control shift right arrow, I would select all of the data from the leftmost to the rightmost side of the table. If you have tables after tables, you could repeatedly hit the shift control down arrow and select the next table to the next table to the next table. If you need to apply formatting to your cells, either number styles, font color changes, borders, shades, you can easily use the ribbon where many of those controls are located. An easier way to open the Format Cells dialog box is to hold down Control and press the number 1 key. Now you have access to all of the extended features. Understand that you need to use the number 1 key located at the top of the keyboard, not the number 1 key located on the number keypad. When formatting your data with styles, like the currency style, the comma style, the percent style, it's easy to use those specific features directly from the ribbon. But some other styles are quite popular that are not located on the ribbon, such as the time style or the scientific notation style. You can access these styles using the control shift keys in conjunction with the number keys 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, or 6. Highlighting a range of data, pressing control shift 1 would apply the comma style. Pressing Control shift 2 would provide the time style. Pressing Control shift 3 will give me the short date style. Pressing Control shift 4 will give me the currency style. Pressing Control shift 5 gives me the percent style. And finally, Control shift 6 gives me the scientific notation style. As a bonus, pressing Control shift 7 will draw a line around the selected range. When you wish to take a plain table and upgrade it to a proper Excel data table, most users would go to the Home ribbon and choose the Format as Table option and then choose one of the built-in color schemes. If you're not too particular with the color scheme that you receive, a faster way to perform this upgrade is to press Control-T on your keyboard. This will ask you where your data is and if the data has a header row or not. As long as you don't have any blank rows or columns in your data, the selections in this Create Table dialog box are usually correct, so you can simply hit OK. If you have a color palette in this library that you prefer over the default blue, you can right-click on that color palette and choose Set as Default. Now when you press Control-T, you'll get that color scheme. 
That's it for part one of Excel Keyboard Shortcuts. To see more amazing Excel Keyboard Shortcuts, see the link in the video description below for parts two and three. Thanks for watching, and remember, at BCTI, the learning never stops.